Before gangster rap could get airplay, guys like Easy E and Ice Cube came here to the Compton Swap Meet to sell records. It's Big A, Dog Pound, Gangster, Compton OG. Born and raised with Easy E, you dig? It was the days me and Easy to come up here and bring Mr. Kim, Kirk Kim's dad's vinyl. Me, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy E, who come here and hand carry vinyl. Won Jun Kim was a North Korean transplant who didn't speak much English so he had no idea what these guys were rapping about. But what he did know was that the record sold, so he kept the shelves of his store stocked with gangster rap at a time when no other record shops had the balls to sell it. Because of the proximity to Compton, but to, to the neighborhoods and so on, this indoor swap meet in his stall became this magnet, not only for people to buy, the new kids who were, who were making records knew that they probably could sell 25 to 50 cassettes here or, or LPs, whatever they were making, at his store. Today, Kim Sung Kirk carries on his father's tradition by supporting underground artists like this guy, King Little G. We're at the Compton Swap Meet right now. We're about to meet up with King Little G, who's been selling like crazy over here. When I came here for the first time, uh, I came as a fan trying to buy a CD from Kirk. And he was really cool with me from day one. So then once I started making the music, I just brought him a copy of it. And he was cool with it. He told me he would, he'd be down to sell it. And now we sell him out. <laughs> His stuff sells crazy. I mean, yeah? It's, it's, it's always been a good seller for me ever since we first started working with him. It, it's, it's kind of been like a blessing, you know what I mean? He's actually helped our business. When my father passed away, we were kind of in, in a little rut. And G actually came with his new music, and it kind of, our, our sales went up, right? Yeah. We, we took his uh, Blue Devil 2 mixtape. We sold it to every single Swami in Southern California. And uh, that was it, huh? We was selling out. <laughs> we did good. <laughs> To be here today, and you know, this for it to be the place where I brought my CD for the first time, and now I'm selling out shows, you know, it's, it's a crazy thing. But I would definitely say Compton has helped me a lot. But you used to rap about like gangbanging and that sort of... Yeah, yeah, I used to rap about my surroundings at the time because see, I came from a very crazy environment where my brothers are from gangs, you know, uh, I was going to a school that was dominated by a certain gang, so it was more or less join or, you know, be the enemy type of thing. And it was, it was kind of hard for us to grow up like that, but you know, that's why I rapped about the stuff that I rap about. But now, you know, I'm more grown. I like to, I like to travel, I like different things now. And that's the type of stuff that I want my people to know that there's a, a bigger world outside of that one block that we want to dominate, you know what I'm saying? When you were younger, what sort of records were you, were you listening to that you buy here? Um, the stuff that really inspired me was, um, was The Chronic. The Chronic really inspired me, and I was only seven, eight years old. I think my music now is starting to, to really sound like the stuff that I truly appreciated when I was a kid, so. And 90s music is what I, what I truly felt. On my way to Long Beach, to smoke some of that bomb weed. Uh, Chill with some of my homies, don't you exit on that wrong street. Cause they shoot to kill, yeah they shoot to kill. In the streets, four deep, in that Coupeville. Obviously, no one wants to have a tough time growing up. No one wants to go through a dysfunctional childhood, but do you think the struggle is the reason you're able to make the music that you make? If we didn't grow up, you know, such a big family living in a one-bedroom apartment or always having to sleep on the floor, yeah, I would say definitely. I, I think the struggle at the same time, but we have to experience that. If you hadn't found success in the music business, what do you think you'd be doing now? Yeah, I think I would be like all of my, all the rest of my other friends. I think I would be like in jail, just doing nothing. Uh, I mean, everybody in my surroundings went to jail or, you know, passed away. It was like, it's like nothing was really promised to us but just death or incarceration. So I'm glad that, you know, I was able to find music. At least I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for everybody who comes from the hood. I'm just speaking for me. I'm glad that I was able to find music because I was able to express myself in other ways rather than me just wanting to hang out in a corner all damn day, you know? I don't like doing that shit. He wears baggy pants and he likes to ride on the walls. And I seen him kissing different girls, rocking them through the halls. My mother said, hmm, I'm sorry, no comprende. No speaker, no inglés. Not knowing my bad attendance. I'm thinking, fuck it, homie, I'm smoking till I collapse. Walking through my apartments, I'm here with the doors. Get in the big smoke, fucking homie. 
we just got to this wing place and King Little G has like a gang of fans just like waiting for him in the parking lot. It's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> But is it normal to just walk out and just meet fans in the street? Um, yeah, man, over here in Southgate, like I said, I've been here since my teenage years, so everybody supports my music over here. Um, I, I'm not really into, like, negative stuff. Remember what I said earlier about, you know, me trying to spread a, a positive message to everybody. It don't really matter what hood, what color it is. I just want to let them know that I'm trying to make my people proud, just like a Mexican boxer, you know? <laughs> but in a musical way. <laughs> yeah, see, we got to get a table over here, because it's like the club. Everybody wants to get a table. Not enough sometimes. Yeah, this is better than Hooters to me, though. Straight up. Because the girls right here don't have to show much, but they're fine. Honestly, yeah, honestly. Do you feel like the broader hip hop community has embraced Hispanic artists? They got something in hip hop called cosign. Cosign? Cosign. Kind of like when an artist says, like, this is the next guy, or I support this guy, you know? That doesn't happen never with Latino artists. Like, the famous artists that are already established in the West Coast are not doing this for us. A bunch of Mexican rappers with no deals. I'm pissed the fuck off, I gotta tell you how I feel. Now that Compton is majority Hispanic, do you think that's gonna change? It's not about how many people are living in the city, it's about the people who are running the music game. It's about them supporting it, not really the people anymore. Because I've already showed that. I can sell out the shows, sell again like the iTunes, sell all kinds of stuff. It's about the artists who are running it, giving that certification. So you think the issue is more at the top than is what I think my message, I'm hoping my message touches a lot of hearts and, you know, we can save lives instead of taking them because we've done that too much already in the 90s, so. Been alone for years doing my thing. It's just that now, you know, I understand that I got to connect the pieces. Compton is a different city from the days when Easy sold his records at the swap meet. But despite the fact that Latinos now make up the majority of South Central, Hispanic rappers have been largely ignored by the mainstream. And now another major change is on the way here. The Compton swap meet closed its doors and downsized in January after being sold to Walmart. What this means for the next generation of underground rap in LA is unclear, but King Little G hopes to keep the culture alive. AK47 mom, I ain't gotta tell them who the fuck we are. I rep my shit till I'm next to God, and when you mention us, you better rep it hard. Tattooed on my chest, yeah. Fuck your bulletproof vest, yeah. Fuck them if they wanna be chillin' with all my enemies, disrespect them, I said. I've been smoking all of my weed, trying to follow my dreams with your ex.